Hi, and welcome back. We're on EDM 7.5, and we're going to talk about triangles today, and we're also going to talk about the hierarchy of triangles. So you will need a Math Masters page 262, and it looks like this. You have a bunch of triangle cards, and you're going to trim those out, and when you do that, make sure you trim close to the triangle because that's going to give you a little bit more room. So as you can see right here, I have mine on blue paper, but one of the things I did was I went ahead and trimmed my triangles, but I made sure that I didn't cut off all those little lines that you can see there. Now, talking about those little lines, that's one of the things I first want to talk to you about. If you're looking at these, does anyone know what these little lines on the sides of the triangles are called? Those are called tick marks. You're right, okay? Tick marks, the job of a tick mark is basically to identify whether or not um, the sides are the same length. So if it has the same number of tick marks, it would have the same length. For example, if I'm looking at this one, I could tell you that these two sides have the same length, but this one would be different. This has two tick marks, that has two tick marks, those two sides are the same length. I can show you this one here. Now you'll notice that this one has one, one, and one. Same amount of tick marks, same length, good. So all three sides of this triangle would be the same length, okay? And for a different one, let's look at this triangle here. What do you notice? Yeah, all three sides are different. So that's represented by using these tick marks. So I know this side, this side, and this side are not equivalent. They're all different measures, very good. All right, so one of the things you need to do is pay attention to those tick marks. And when you draw triangles, you want to also include tick marks as well because that will help um, whoever's looking at your triangle know what type of triangle you are dealing with. So speaking of triangles, let's talk about and let's review the different types of triangles that we have. I'm going to pull some triangles out and I want you to try to tell me what type of triangle these ones are right here. Okay. What do you think? What type of triangles are those? Yes, okay, these are right triangles. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is in the corner of each one of these triangles, one of those angles has this little drawing in there, and that little box is to show that that is a 90 degree angle, otherwise known as a right angle. So a right triangle is a triangle in which one of the angles measures 90 degrees. Very good. Now, the next type of triangle that we're going to work with is an acute triangle. Now, with an acute triangle, I'll show you some examples of acute triangles. Okay. What do you notice about acute triangles? Yeah, there's no right angle. Okay. And also, one of the other things is, is that all three of the angles in an acute triangle have to be less than 90 degrees, okay? So all of these angles would be less than 90 degrees in each one of those. Now, let's compare that to a couple other ones. So these would be acute triangles. Let's look at these examples right here, okay? Would these triangles be considered acute triangles? No, right, so what you'll see is and each one of these, each one of these has an angle that is actually more than 90 degrees. Do you know the name of this type of triangle? Yes, this is called an obtuse, an obtuse triangle. An obtuse triangle is a triangle in which one of the angles in it measures more than 90 degrees. Okay, so this, these ones right here would be obtuse these ones would be acute, very good. Now, I'm gonna pull a couple other ones here and let's talk about these. So, not that one, let's look at these ones, this one, I'm gonna pull a few and I want you to try to guess what type of triangle I'm pulling right now. All of these triangles have something in common. What do they have in common? What do you think? Yes. Okay, so if we're looking at these, these type of triangles have a special name called an isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle is a triangle in which two sides are equal in length. 
So we have an isosceles here. These two are equal in length. These two are equal in length, or I can turn it and say these two are equal in length. These two are equal, equal, and I can turn it equal, equal, equal. Um, isosceles, and we can see that these two sides are equal in length. So an isosceles triangle is a triangle in which two sides are equal in length. Now, some of the triangles that I have up here that are isosceles also have a different name. And do you know what that name is? Here, I'll separate them. This one would have a different name. This one, this one. Okay, these ones right here would just be considered isosceles. These triangles would be considered isosceles, but they also have a different name. And what would that be? Yeah, these are actually called equilateral triangles. Equilateral triangles are triangles in which all three sides are equal in length. So you can see that these three sides are all equal in length. An isosceles triangle, okay, um, has two sides that are equal in length, but an equilateral triangle is a triangle where three sides are equal in length, okay? So all equilateral triangles can be isosceles triangles, but not all, but isosceles, not all isosceles triangles can be equilateral triangles here. So we can kind of see that here. So let's work with these triangles in what is called a hierarchy, okay? So let's talk about a hierarchy here. So I'm going to um, take this back a little bit so that we can see. Okay, so one of the things I want you to look at is Math Journal page 246. And on this page, we are going to create a tri triangle hierarchy. And it says on the left, write the categories and subcategories from the triangle hi hierarchy you create in class. We're going to do it here on the video. Use the hierarchy to classify your triangles, and when you're finished, glue or tape the cards in place. So that's one of the things that you can do here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a hierarchy. Now, I keep saying that word, but what is a hierarchy? Okay, so a hierarchy is basically an arrangement of items in which some items are represented as being above or below or at the same level as one another, okay? So like, for example, um, all of you would be students in your classroom. Now, some of you would be um, students in your classroom that have a sibling, and then some of you would be students in the classroom that have a sibling, and that sibling is a brother, okay? So you would all start off here. If you have a sibling, you would be able to go to the next level. And if you were a sibling, had a sibling, that, and your sibling was a brother, you would be able to go to the next level. So basically, it's kind of breaking things down at above, below, or at the same level as one another. So what we're going to do is we're going to think about how to create a hierarchy. So if I put my triangles all over here, let's think about all these triangles. Is there a way that we can include all the triangles in a level? Okay. What can we say? Yeah, that they're all triangles. Okay, so that would be a category. So we can say they're all triangles. So I'm starting with triangles. Okay, so basically if it's a triangle, it can be here at this level. So all of these triangles can stay here at this position because they're all considered triangles, okay? Now what we wanna do is kind of break that down into another subcategory, okay? So if we're thinking about that, what can we do? What kind of category do we wanna use? Maybe a type of triangle, okay? Um, I'm thinking maybe isosceles, okay? So if we are gonna take this down, let's make our next group just triangles that are isosceles triangles. So we're gonna go ahead and write that down. So if we're gonna categorize that, I want to just make our next category um, isosceles triangles. So that's spelled I-S-O-S-C-E-L-E-S, -E -E isosceles triangles. Okay, so only the triangles that are isosceles triangles can move down to this level. So um, this one would work. 
What about this one? Nope. This one? Yeah. This one? No. This one? No. It would have to stay there. I have one here. Um, this one would work. This one? Any other ones? This one? Okay, that would be isosceles. Okay, do we see any other ones that are in just the triangle category that I missed that would be considered isosceles? Mm -mm. No, I don't see any more either. Okay, so what we do is basically these triangles are kind of stuck right here at this level because they do not meet the attribute or the property of being an isosceles triangle. Let's see if we can move some of these other triangles down at least one more category, one more subcategory. So let's see, what else can we do here? How can we separate these groups? Yeah, if we think about it, some of these isosceles triangles are actually equilateral triangles. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make another subcategory here and say equilateral triangles. E-Q-U-I-L-A-T-E-R-A-L, -E -E equilateral triangles. Okay, now only the ones that are equilateral triangles can move from here to here. I can't take any from here because they stopped. They're not allowed to move anymore. I can only take the ones from this subcategory, okay, and move them here. So only the ones that are equilateral can move from here to here. So let's see, this one would be able to move, this one, this one. What about this one? Nope. This one? Nope. What about this one? Nope. Okay. So only these three triangles would be able to move into the equilateral triangle category. Good. So what we did is we had a category and we actually end up with two subcategories here, or we can say this is our category and this would be a subcategory of that one. Okay. But as we moved it down the hierarchy, you will see that we have some triangles. If we're looking at isosceles that are above below and at the same level as isosceles, and that's what a hierarchy is. So one of the things we're gonna do is we're also going to answer some questions. So let's look at Match Journal page 247. I'm gonna lay that on top of there and maybe I won't move my triangles too much. Now it says to name a category shown on the hierarchy, then name a subcategory of that category. So we have a couple ones that we can kind of choose from, but one of the categories we have is the isosceles triangles, right? So we have a category of isosceles triangles that we can do. So we're gonna go ahead and write that down. Isosceles triangles. And what would be a subcategory of isosceles triangles? Yeah, equilateral triangles. So a subcategory would be equilateral triangles. Okay. All right, now what it wants us to do here is to draw an isosceles triangle. So let's go ahead and draw an isosceles triangle. Now, do you remember what we have to put on the triangle to show that two sides are equal to each other? Yep, I'm gonna have to put those tick marks. So you can either put one or two or three on each side. It doesn't matter as long as it's the same number. So if you wanna put two, go ahead, just make sure both sides have two. Um, so that would show that, that would be an isosceles triangle because an isosceles triangle has two sides that are equal to each other. For B, it says draw a triangle that is not an isosceles triangle. So. I can show, well, let's see. Um, let's go down like that and we'll go up like here. And we'll say that this, we'll put three tick marks on that one, maybe two on that one and one on that one. And if we do that, we're proving that each one of these sides are a different length. Okay, so that would definitely not be isosceles. Okay, draw an equilateral triangle. So how do we go about that? Equilateral, meaning all three sides would be equal. So I wanna draw a triangle here. 
that is equal on all sides. Now, I'm not using a ruler to measure it out right now, but I can show, well, if I put two tick marks here, two here, and two here, then I can say, well, all three sides are equal, and the tick marks are showing that they would be equal. Good. So our next thing says, is your equilateral triangle also a isosceles triangle? Yeah, because let's think about that. An isosceles triangle has to have two sides that are same measure. Does this have two sides that are same measure? Yes. Okay, so yes. Okay. Now, another way to think about this is an equilateral triangle is what? Equilateral triangles are, guess what? They're a subcategory of isosceles triangles. They're a subcategory, which means that um, it's under that. So if we're looking at that, equilateral triangles are a subcategory of isosceles triangles. Okay. And the fact is that all equilateral triangles are also isosceles triangles. And that makes sense because the definition of an isosceles triangle is two sides that are equal. And that definitely has two sides that are equal. So all equilateral triangles are isosceles triangles, but not all isosceles triangles are equilateral. So you can kind of see how that works. Okay, four, it says in each statement below, replace the underlying category with a different category from the triangle hierarchy so that the new statement is still True. Okay, so let's think about this. All triangles have three sides and three angles. All blank have three sides and three angles. All isosceles triangles. Okay, so let's put that. Okay. All isosceles triangles have at least two sides that are the same length. All blank have at least two sides that are the same length. Mm -hmm. All equilateral triangles. Okay. All isosceles triangles have a line of symmetry. All blank have a line of symmetry. All equilateral triangles. <laughs> Okay. Look, look at your answers to problem four and describe any patterns that you see. Hint, think about the categories and subcategories. Did you notice like what we were doing? Isosceles triangles, would that be using these words, categories and subcategories? Isosceles triangles, that is a subcategory of triangles, right? Mm -hmm. Equilateral triangles, is that a subcategory of isosceles? Yeah. And once again, equilateral triangles is a subcategory of isosceles. So basically, the word that we always answered with is actually a subcategory of the category that's underlined, which is kind of cool. So I think that's what we're going to write because that's kind of like the pattern that we see here. So um, I always wrote um, a subcategory. of the category that's underlined. Very good. All right, guys, so we did a fabulous job once again. Let's keep practicing those triangles and remember what a hierarchy is and playing with hierarchies because they're pretty fun being able to categorize and then make subcategories out of that as well. All right, good job, and I'll see you again in the next lesson. All right, bye-bye.